Rest in peace, Bercoli. Hey everyone, Templar74 here with another video, and today's video is going to be my review of the latest episode of Sword Art Online, Alicization, War of Underworld, Episode 14, End to Eternity. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this episode, while not as action-packed and non-stop as last week's episode was, and I remember saying this last week, this episode, it just flew by one thing right after another, and we went through about half a light novel in one episode. While this episode wasn't that extreme as far as one thing after another, this episode was a little bit slower pace. This episode was still great in my opinion. There was a lot of fan service in this episode, and the end battle between Bercoli and Emperor Vecta, I was just not ready for that. But uh, we'll talk about all of that soon enough. So at risk of further rambling though, let's move on to the actual episode. So this episode, and I'm going to say it right now, this episode can be broke down into three distinct parts. It could be broken down into thirds, shall we say. And the first part of the episode is the arrival of all the players from ALO and their arrival in the battle with Asuna and the Human Guardian Army. Then there is the middle part of the episode, the other... Th the second third of the episode, is devoted to Ocean Turtle and Higa. And then the third and final part of this episode, which is really the chunk of the episode and the bread and butter of the episode, in my opinion, really was the battle between Bercoli and Vecta. So those are basically the three parts of the episode, but I'm going to start at the very beginning because that's the best way to start off. So the arrival of the ALO players in the battle between the Human Guardian Army and the American players here, and this part of the episode, and this is where I say fan service really came into play, I was not expecting the ordinal scale version of Swordland to be played during this, but it was so fitting because the ALO players show up and they are just going after the American players giving Asuna some breathing room here and it starts with none other than Klein and Agil and Silica and Liz and we basically learn that Liz's speech at the end of last season was able to convince about 2,000 players to convert their account and come in to save Asuna to save Alice and to save the underworld so they were only able to convince about 2,000 which isn't every player in ALO but it's a good chunk of them and this help is much needed and even Renly comes up to Asuna now he's like, who are these people? And Asuna introduces them. And basically, Asuna comes down with a plan here. She basically has Renly take the human guardian forces and pull them back to focus on sacred arts and healing so that her precious friends don't lose their accounts because they don't know how the sacred art thing works. While the ALO players and Asuna are going to take the, the vanguard of the battle. They're going to lead from the front. They're going to do the battling and Renly and the other knights of the Human Guardian Army are going to go back and serve as support, which really is a good plan. It's a solid plan. But before this, we see Asuna question Liz and Silica about how they managed to get here. And they basically tell Asuna, how do you think we got here? It was Yui. And the thought of Yui helping Asuna out of this and helping Kirito out of this just brings a tear to her. And it actually restores Asuna, Stacia's character back. Because if you remember, Stacia slash Asuna was really beaten up. There was blood running down her face. She was really exhausted from the battle, really banged up. And the thought of Yui and everything, the memories, it was just an overwhelming thing for Asuna. And she was able to restore the super account Stacia so that she's not looking as beat up as she leads from the front and she leads the charge against these enemy forces from America here. And I think it's very interesting because Asuna is determined that she is going to be the front person. She is going to take the charge here, which just shows that Asuna really is in command of the Human Guardian Army here. So a really interesting alliance here nonetheless. 
And now the middle part of this episode. We're back to Ocean Turtle here in the Ocean Turtle gang, as I'm going to refer to them as. And we haven't seen these guys in like half a year, so it's been a long wait here on the Ocean Turtle. And I, I know the coronavirus hasn't helped things, but it's been a long wait since we've seen these guys. But anyway, more importantly, and I digress, back to Higa here. Higa is basically watching what's going on in the underworld, wondering what he can do about Kirito. And it's as he's watching this data chart about Kirito's floodlight and he notices two spikes in his activity of his consciousness. And that was when Lifa and Sinan logged in. And there were two spikes there. And basically, as Higa is going back and forth in his mind, trying to figure out what could have caused this, as shouldn't it be possible, he realizes that there is a way to fix Kirito. And that way to fix Kirito is to copy his uh, ego, his flucked light, his character, more or less, from the memories of the people that were closest to him and project that onto Kirito to fix the part of him that was deactivated here. And this is a very bold and interesting plan. Higa is confident, though, that he can pull it off, but he can't pull it off from Subcon. He's got to get back to the main control room. Well, getting to the main control room is not exactly easy, because Mr. Miller's goons with the guns still have control of the main control room, and if they see Higa, they are most, most likely going to kill him. And they can't spare JSDF resources because there's not a lot of them. There's not very many people that can go down there and fight them and get Higa in there. Taking the main control room basically would be a suicide mission. So Higgett decides that we really can't wait for the assault team because if the assault team comes in and a battle ensues, everything is going to be shut down. Kirito won't survive. He knows that he's got to get to the main control room in order to fix Kirito. And he's also got to have this done while the three girls, Sinan, Lifa, and Asuna, are all logged into the STL with Kirito. So what he decides to do is he is going to go through a maintenance shaft to a maintenance port and log into the main control room that way. Well, the only problem with that is the bulkhead would have to be opened, and if he did that, Mr. Miller's goons would notice he's there and most likely kill him. So what is Higa going to do here? Higa decides that he is going to sacrifice his robot prototype here, and he's going to send it down, and it's going to distract the goons long enough that he can get the bulkhead open and get to the maintenance shaft. Great plan, except if he's noticed, he's most likely going to be dead. He needs to have some kind of bodyguard with him. But Higa refuses. He says, I'm the only one that can fit in the shaft here. And he basically convinces everybody that they have to do this for Kirito. He's done so much for them. If they can't do this for him, how are they ever going to look him in the eye again? So yes, a very moving speech by Higa. I won't lie, I was actually torn by his speech too. It, it really tugged at the heartstrings right in the feels here. And so, yeah, Higa volunteers that he's going to go down into the shaft, and it's at this time Yanni steps up. Yanni is one of the technicians in the subcon room with them, and basically Yanni volunteers. He's like, I've been maintaining these cables, I know the shaft, and I may be scrawny so I can fit, but at the very least, I can at least take a bullet for you. So Yanni is going to go down with Higa, and uh, everybody that's read the light novel already knows about Yanni, but I'm not going to spoil it here in the video. So it's going to be Yanni and Higa going down in the maintenance shaft while the robot goes down the stairs and tries to distract the goons with the guns. Great plan. Great. Okay, so last, and this is the last part of the episode, the meat and potatoes of this episode. This was the part of the episode that had me bawling by the time it was over, and the battle between Bercoli and Vecta. Okay, the battle. The battle is epically animated here. You can tell that this is going to be the battle where shit will go down. This is the big part of the episode here, Bercoli versus Vecta. Bercoli, of course, is not doing great in this battle by any stretch of the imagination, but Bercoli being the legendary hero and having fun and enjoying this battle against Vecta, he's not about to go down on his knees. He's going to go out fighting, and he continues to fight Vecta. Vecta, of course, is still able to dodge him, and Bercoli is trying to 
he's trying to buy himself time because the sword that splits the past is going to catch up with Vecta and end him. However, Bercoli needs to stall for time in order for this to happen. And it's at this time Bercoli's dragon swoops down from the sky and buys him time by attacking Vecta against Bercoli's orders. And Bercoli's like, even once, you've never disobeyed my orders, but now here you are. And the dragon of Bercoli's, of course, just, he blasts Vecta multiple times. Vecta eventually kills the dragon here, but it did the job. It got Bercoli the few seconds he needed, and Vecta ends up being slashed and destroyed by Bercoli's sword that slashes time. And so, yeah, Vecta is destroyed in a glorious blaze here, and Vecta is sent back to the Ocean Turtle, but however, Bercoli, on the other hand, he did not survive the battle. Like a true legendary knight, he went down fighting. And it's at this point, the end of the episode, and this episode... The, the end of this episode was just tugging at the heartstrings for me. Because we see Alice waking up, no longer under Vecta's influence. And she sees Bercoli's lifeless body there. And at first she thinks that Bercoli is still alive, but... And then she notices that he's lost an arm. He's covered in blood. Alice knows that he's dead. And Alice is sobbing over Ber Bercoli here. And Bercoli's ghost is actually up on his dragon, the ghost of his dragon. They're actually floating overhead above Alice. And basically, Bercoli is saying, don't cry. You know, you'll do fine. And he basically refers to Alice not only as his apprentice, but his daughter, which was really touching here. And it's also at this time Administrator's ghost, or the memory of Administrator within Bercoli's memory and consciousness, I guess you could say, arrives. And Bercoli doesn't at first quite understand it, but the two are talking, and he sees Administrator smiling. And Bercoli offers Administrator a ride off on his dragon as they head off into what essentially is heaven. They're both dead. And it's at this time Bercoli bids a farewell to Fanatio and basically calls out to Fanatio and says, hey, take care of our child. I'm sorry I won't be able to be there. And Fanatio, of course, hears this. She knows Bercoli is dead, and she vows to help or vows to follow Bercoli as far as raising their child right here. But yeah, if you've read the light novel, you knew where Bercoli and Fanatio were. You knew that they were going to be parents because, I mean, if you read the light novel, it said it quite explicitly. Uh, the first opening of War of the Underworld pretty much gave it away that that was really what was going on with Fanatio and Bercoli here. And it's sad that Bercoli is never going to see his child be raised. His biological child, as far as we know, from ever being raised, we're never going to see that. Really, really sad here, and really sad for Fanatio. You know, that part just hit right in the feels. But that's essentially the episode with one other thing. We're back on the Ocean Turtle, and I gotta point this out just because of how creepy and awesome it was. Creepy awesome, I guess we'll call it that. And that's back on the Ocean Turtle, we see Mr. Miller. He finally wakes up, and Critter's like, oh, you're awake. Sorry you got defeated, but we did what you asked. And then he basically says, Vazigo has already converted his personal account and went back in. And this intrigues Mr. Miller, so he gives... Uh, Critter, another account, says, I'm going back in as my personal account. Log this in. And it's Subtilizer. We know that Subtilizer is going to show back up here, but the password is just really creepy as all get out. It's Tasty Souls. And, well, eating Tasty Souls, essentially. And that was just really creepy, in my opinion. Really creepy here. But, I mean, it's fitting for Mr. Miller. He's a psychopath. And so, yeah, Subtilizer is going to show back up in the underworld here really, really soon. Next week, actually. But, yeah, that was essentially the episode. Like I said, this episode was great. While not as nonstop as last week's episode, where we essentially went through three quarters of a light novel within one episode. This episode still was able to do things justice while still moving the plot along quite a bit. The fan service was great here. Like I said, was not expecting to hear ordinal scale music in this episode. But speaking about ordinal scale for a second, I do want to go back and talk about this because I would not be doing this episode objective justice if I did not point this out. So in the light novel, when the ALO gang converts into the underworld, they 
look different. They look more like Underworlders than their ALO perspectives. In the episode, they look like their ALO perspectives. I don't know if that was animation decision or if it was because of production delays because of COVID-19. I don't know exactly what it was, but the episode does get a couple of points detracted from that, in my opinion. Like I said, not a big deal, but it's just something that I really did not feel entirely comfortable with. But overall, though, the episode outweighed that, in my opinion. But again, would not be doing this episode objective justice if I didn't point it out. So yeah, with all those things considered, everybody, this episode was great, in my opinion. While not as nonstop as last week's episode, still fantastic. The battle between Bercoli and Vecta, I, I was not ready for that. I will be honest, I was not ready for that level of epicness. But uh, it happened. It, it happened. Was not ready for that tearjerker at the end of the episode. But it happened, and the way it happened was really great, in my opinion. I, I'm really sad for Alice here. I'm really sad for Bercoli. This episode just hit right in the feels. Overall, I give this episode a 9 out of 10. Like I said, I can't give it a perfect 10 just because of the little things like the ALO adjustment here and just a little bit of... And i got to say this just because it's me. The character design and the creepiness of Subtilizer's uh, personal account here, those were the only two things that kind of made me uneasy about this episode. Also, Administrator. I mean, yes, it's nice to see Administrator from a different perspective, but still, I'm not comfortable with seeing her like she was with Bercoli. I, I, I don't know why. That's probably just me, but still, it detracts a little bit, in my opinion. So, yeah, 9 out of 10. Great episode, just not as nonstop as last week's episode, in my opinion. But as always in the comment section down below. Let me know what your guys' thoughts were about this week's episode. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was just eh there? What were your thoughts? Just let me know in the comment section down below because as always, I enjoy hearing from you. All right, everyone, as always, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody. Hey everyone, Templar74 here. Did you enjoy the video? Do you want to help support me in making more content like this and see your name here at the end of every video? Then consider supporting me on Patreon. Any help is greatly appreciated and will help ensure continuation and increase the quality of production of the videos that I am able to make for all of you. Link down below. Again, thank you so much for your support and for liking and subscribing. You all are amazing. And as always, everyone, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.